Hello, dear friends. Thomas Manton IV coming to you live from the beautiful ocean. And the Lord spoke to me a couple days ago. I've been in a conference and haven't had time to come back at you. I'll get over here to the beach. I've been in meetings around the clock. It's been really, really, really busy. <laughs> I wrote one of my friends. I said, you know, I've just been so busy. But this word began to erupt in my heart again about two days ago. And the sun is blazing here. Let me move this way a little bit. And said to me, the Lord said to me, um, from Mark eleven twenty three to 25, says, uh, speak and it shall be done. Now I'm simplifying that. And the 24th verse said, you know, some people say speak to the mountain and you got to say it in the King James and then you muddle up the, the, the you, sometimes people muddle up the quick interpretation of someone. And I like to take a verse when I can, as the Lord leads me, and just say a few of the words of the verse so that you get the real point. Speak in, and then in faith, believing, and it will be done. You got that? A corresponding verse to that. Mark eleven twenty three is John fifteen seven. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will. You'll ask for what you want and it will be done for you. Now, Mark eleven twenty four said, whatever things you want, as you're praying, believe you receive them and you shall have them. So believe, receive and have. 25th verse said, if you are praying and you have ought against anybody, forgive them. Because if you don't forgive, your prayers are hindered, okay? Let Mark 11, 22 said, have the God kind of faith. God spoke and then it was, right? Let there be light and there was light. So now we need to simplify it back to understand that and not be so complicated about things. Just raw faith. The gift of faith is talked about in 1 Corinthians 12. It's a very powerful gift. Uh, the gift of believing for miraculous things to happen for you. And um, another verse is talking about the prophetic decree in Amos 3, 7. The scripture says, God will do nothing unless he first reveals a, his secret to his servant, the prophet, and then when it, the prophet speaks, then things will begin to happen. And then the next verse says, Amos 3 verse 8 says, uh, A lion has roared in the city, who will not fear? In other words, when the lion comes, everybody takes notice because the lion roars and that's like the call to attention, to move, get out of the way, or... Uh, show some respect or uh, exit the scene because the lion is announcing his uh, king of the jungle status. <laughs> and the eighth verse there said, second part of the eighth verse, a lion has roared in the city who will not fear. The Lord, here it is, the Lord has spoken. Who can then but prophesy? What that means is God speaks through the prophet as the voice and then he expects other people to echo what was said. Now, let me break it down a little simpler for the average everybody, including all of us, to, to understand this in a simple way, that you got to have the known will of God, okay? Once you know the will of God, and then you um, can speak according to what he says should happen. So the voice of God will announce what's the will of God, which is also prophecy, which is also through the prophet, because uh, you got the rhema and the logos. The logos was the written word, which was written by the inspired authors, you know, by the Holy Ghost, the 40 authors of the word of God. And then you have uh, rhema, which is like an inspired word, you know, and then you have prophecy, which is, the spoken word based, you know, on the mind of God, not reading a scripture aloud, 
not saying it from memory, but hearing the voice of God to say and announce something specific as the prophet and declare it, and then everybody should begin to echo that. Now, here's the power of this thing in, in, in summation of, of the whole thing, is speech. You got to speak it. Here's a practical analogy. Say, you know, a, a gift to you of like a million dollars would be a great thing. And then you think and hope and pray and wish and desire and fantasize that maybe someday someone will walk up to you and give you that. Well, how could they really, unless you devised it by faith, desired it, then declared it, and then had a use for it that God sees as credible because God's not a waster. He's not crazy. You know, and sometimes people get money and we know about this. People get money and they don't know yet what to do with it. And God lets them go on their little journey of uh, wastefulness, wrong things, not having the wisdom, you know, to, to know what to do. Look at these birds. Sorry. They're going crazy over here. Can you see them? Oh, here they come right in my face. Hey, birds. Oh, wow, look at that. That's like about 10 feet from me and some of them flying over my head. Okay. Look at the cruise ship out here. I'll see if I can, I don't know if I can zoom this. Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah, I'm trying to find There's cruise ships here. That's one. It's a bit blurry because of the zoom. Here's a nice yacht. Oh, I wish this camera was better. Okay. And some people parasailing, sky sailing. Yeah, you see that? On a, off of a boat. Okay, good. Beautiful place here. So, coming to you live from the beach once again. So now, the speech, the desire, the plan, they all go together. We're in training for raining. I was in Savo, Kenya recently you could just show those on the floor. Yeah. I, I was in Savo, Kenya, east, east, uh, east of Nairobi, about four hours, going down toward the coast of Mombasa. It's where those beautiful baobab trees grow, very strange trees. You can look them up. B-A-O-B-O-B -B -O -B. trees. They're very unique. They only grow in that part of the world. And I just was en en enamored looking at them as we were driving around. And I ran into a big bull elephant. Had, have, we have a video. My editor has said he's finished that. And the clips of the best, the best of it. And I'm going to put that online. You're going to get to see me talking to an elephant as he was charging us. And I made him stop charging by the power of God. It's like Daniel in the lion's den. <laughs> made the lions go to sleep like kitty cats. <laughs> Probably used one of them for a pillow. That's the power of God. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego jumped in the fire. It didn't burn. And it was made seven times hotter to the point that those that were near the entrance where the flames were burnt alive. But then they tame and throw those three guys, they threw those three guys in there. They didn't burn. That's the power of God. Then we had giraffes walking around, antelopes, my God, monkeys, crocodiles in the water, ostriches running around. What else? All kinds of gazelles and zebras and just really cool cool what a place while I was there the Lord spoke to me this word and I'm making a book he told me to make a book out of this and it'll be coming out soon it's been uh, it's been typed but I have to finish the final edit and then get it with the editors and the design and layout it'll be it'll come out and I'm trying to wrestle with the title but it has to do with Going up because you're growing up. Grow up, go up. Grow up, go up. Grow up, go up. So there's levels in this thing. There's levels in this walk. You know? And you have to... You have to... Uh, you have to... Exercise your faith. A dear sister in the Lord who's a prophetess and another uh, business couple that are partners of the ministry here where I am we're having a great time we just had lunch and I was asked uh, this question how do you grow stronger in the prophetic I thought and I, I always 
set people back to the visitation I had in 1986 when the Lord Jesus Christ in an open vision laid his hands on my head in the spirit and in front of me and said, my son Thomas, I've ordained you as my prophet to, to be my prophet to the nations. At the time, I didn't know what it was. I had just gotten saved. So I chalk all this up to the sovereign commissioning and call of God. But I had this other answer. You get stronger in the prophetic by use. It's like, it's not like a natural muscle, but you're exercising yourself in the spirit and you're learning. Like you, you hear something, you say it, you see how it pans out. Does it come to pass? Uh, could you have said it differently? How, do you, how are you seeing? How are you hearing? How are you interpreting? And when you do that multiple times, it's like anything else. You get better in business as you do it. You get better at driving. You remember when you first dro drove, you were scared. You didn't even know how to drive the car. Now you can fly around and drive super speed, <laughs> uh, speed and, you know, in an alleyway and not hit anything because you get so good at the turning and managing it. Well, you didn't have that the first day you got into it, right? So that's one way to exercise it. But I say this, if God has called someone to be a prophet, my God, they're going to know it. It's going to be amazing because a prophet is an announcer, a presenter of the word of the Lord, a vocal mouthpiece. It's going to, he's going to cause you to speak. You understand? It's not like, well, I think I heard this and I think I saw this. Come on now. You know, you might be in the realm of seeing something or flowing a little bit in the gift of the spirit. But when God speaks, you're going to know. You say, I think he spoke to me. No, he didn't say. He might not have said anything. He might have just let you see a glimpse of something and you didn't know how to interpret or else it wasn't God at all. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> when God speaks and the Lord appears, my God, you're going to know about it. You can't, you can't mistake it. All right. So this thing in the prophetic that people marvel at, it's like a resident thing. And I, I notice because the anointing is upon, upon me, I have power. We've been doing this today, declaring over people prophetically. I was ministering in the conference and uh, praying over serious, high-level business people and we were coming, lining up, and uh, God was speaking details. And then we're praying over families. There's someone that sold thousands of dollars to host me to come here. Uh, uh, to, to this place more than once and the Lord's going to bless them. So they put their phone on the table in front of me, put their hand on it, said, Prophet, Doctor, can, can you, Doctor, can you please pray over this? All my family members' numbers are in here and the pictures of them and all that. Can you pray and declare? And I just spoke a prophetic word to pray and declare that all of them will be saved. The circumstances will be created for God to get through to them. They're not going to hell. They're going to heaven. And, and things are going to happen to get them saved. I want to add you in this right now because we're online here with you. Your family, all your family members right now, I'm feeling the anointing for this. Standing here, watch the waves crash. Look at that. Can you see that? Right next to my feet here. This is beautiful. The Lord is going to save all of them. We declare it. God will create the circumstances to get through to them because he knows how hard their hearts are. And he knows them. God knows every individual person. And he knows what it'll take to get through to them. And you need to give it up, permission to the Lord to do whatever it takes to squeeze them if he has to. With situations and all kinds of things happening. I'm not talking about bad things. I'm talking about, you know, whatever it takes that they can get saved and cry out to him and be saved. And we just believe that every person is going to be born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, delivered and set free. Can you say amen? So we, we're declaring that. And you know what I was what I was about to say in the point of that was there's like there's an innate power in the anointing that gives you this authority and you know you're going to speak it and it's going to just happen. Now I pray that you'll get into that realm as an intercessor. Be you a prophet or not. Be you an evangelist or pastor or reverend or not. You can flow in the Holy Ghost. And I just pray right now that that anointing will come upon you. And you preachers, my, my people, that um, you're listening to me and getting touched through this ministry. 
and, I, and I'm, I'm becoming a papa and father in the spirit to many. There was a word given about this in this conference and a major apostle said it's happening. It's going to happen with ease. It's going to happen around the world. It's switching on and we, we, we're having sons and daughters all over the world. The ministry has been international across six continents for years. And I've been to 32 countries now in all six continents of the world, preaching revivals, crusades, media appearances, all of it. And all kinds of conferences, churches, revivals, stadiums, outdoor meetings, indoor meetings. And, and it's been great and God's been glorified and we've already touched, you know, multitudes of people. I guess you can count it to the millions, especially in one nation of Kenya. 50 million people there in the population of the country have been affected by the prophecies God's using me to speak because things have changed in the country and what we said. To the last person, to the end of the continent, the end of that country, rather, north, south, east, or west, doesn't have to know my name, but the power of God's been released through this ministry to touch them, and they're benefiting by it. They're benefiting greatly by, you know, the anointing that God's placed upon my life and the way Either. Oh, look at that. Pretty nice, yeah? Okay. Through this ministry, God has touched multitudes. But there's a greater season just about to happen. More is coming. And I want to train people. I want to activate people in business, in wealth creation. I've been speaking about that. In fact, two, today's Sunday, Tuesday it was, a few days ago this week, the Lord had me to release this activation for super abundance. So right now I want to activate this anointing for the super prophetic, the super blessed anointing that you can hear and see and know and declare and prophesy to. Whether you be a prophet or seer or not, let me tell you, a seer is always a, a, a one who can see, but is not necessarily a prophet. The prophet is the vocal mouthpiece. And when you come out and speak what's on the mind of God, you alert the whole world, including the powers of darkness and all these idiots in the world and all these things. I want to say, you don't want to just sign up to say, I want to be a prophet. You don't know the expense. You don't know the warfare. You don't know the... The, the, the height of what you have to walk through and the price you have to pay. So don't just desire to say, I want that. But Moses said, I wish all God's people were prophets. And Paul said, you all can prophesy. Yes, you all can prophesy. By, by the moving of the Holy Spirit. The, get, the power of the offices is the fivefold ministry, which we see in Ephesians 4, 10, through 12, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men, so apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the saints, for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ, that we grow up into the stature and fullness of the uh, stature of the Son of God, and not tossed to and fro like children by every word or every whim or wind or thing, but that we get grounded, you know, in the real thing. Those offices are elect the, the ascension gifts. As Jesus was ascending, he called some to be his own representatives. We call that the fivefold ministry. You cannot vote for someone to be in that office. You can't be a mama and hold up a baby and say, Lord, make him an apostle, make him a prophet. Nonsense. The Lord would have had to have chosen that one already to do that. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher are sacred offices that Jesus Christ himself has called to work for him and represent him. That's God's elected choice. Those are the elect. Those are the official, officials, the officers, the representatives, the ministers. You cannot desire that. But Paul said, desire earnestly the best gift. What is that? The gift of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit that are moving now. The Holy Spirit moving, according to 1 Corinthians 12, the gifts of the Spirit, which are really the manifestations of the Spirit. Pneuma, the word spirit, P-N-E-U-M-A, is the Greek word for spirit. 
and tikos is the word for manifestation. So the Greek word is pneumatikos, pneuma, tikos. Pneumat, pneuma, tikos. Pneuma being spirit, tikos being manifestation thereof. We call them the gifts of the spirit, but really they're, the, they're manifestations of the spirit. And even we call the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, but you know, it's not the Acts of men, it was the Acts of the Holy Ghost. I think if you can think or read or, you know, add two plus two equals seven. No, excuse me, <laughs> that's a joke. Two plus two equals four, you can kind of figure that out. The Holy Spirit is the only one who could have made all of those great things happen. Of course, the apostles and the people were the ones in the middle of it, flowing in it, but it was the Holy Ghost that was doing it. So it was the Acts of the Holy Ghost, although it was called the Acts of the Apostles. You get it? Same thing with the manifestation of the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit moving. And the Holy Spirit wants to... He wants to... Um, he wants to... Move through everybody. So you don't have to be a pastor. In Australia, they say pastor. In South Africa, they say pastor. In America, they say pastor or pastor. You don't have to be an evangelist. You don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be an apostle. You don't have to be an ordained teacher by Jesus Christ to flow in the Holy Ghost. You could be a son or daughter of God just believing for the anointing to touch you and you can begin to flow. I've not done this, but I'm feeling influenced by heaven here. I've not done this in a while. You know, I've been teaching a lot on the laws of success and about wealth creation. I've been doing that, but my God, this needs to come in. And I'm, I'm just so excited that I'm going into this realm in the spirit. This is not about how you're going to get a breakthrough in your finances. I've done that in other, in other services and other messages. And I have a lot more coming on that. And you can go back and play the ones I've had before on that. But this is, I'm talking to people here that are believing for great things. And you want to see results? You want prayers answered? Yes? Say amen, somebody. You want prayers answered? And also, also you want God to use you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, beloved Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, Ben David, I mean, of the house of David, Jesus of Nazareth. Whoo, my God, I feel the anointing. The Holy Spirit moving. Touch, my friend, right now. There it is. Receive. <sighs> Receive the wind of the breath of the Holy Ghost. Kachetalaba. Man, I feel God here. And the Lord is going to begin to cause a wind of heaven to blow upon you. And you're going to begin to see things. You're going to begin to get words of knowledge. You're going to begin to get words of wisdom. You're going to begin to get um, discerning of spirits. You're going to begin to see people for who they are. You're going to begin to see devils that are trying to mess you up, that are surrounding and trying to infiltrate your life. God's going to begin to release angels more so to show you who's who and what's what and you're going to begin to break the powers of darkness and get free god's also going to begin to align you with the right people he's going to begin to cause your you know greater greater relationships stronger and also new relationships that you didn't have before that are really of god by with great people and you're not going to live a sad lonely dejected struggling messed up suppressed and oppressed and depressed life suppressed oppressed depressed those are not for you you need to be empowered enlightened <laughs> enlivened <laughs> and invigorated and lifted up elevated that's the word i'm looking for e e e so you got the baddies d's and <laughs> the eschons you know Depression, oppression, suppression. No, you need to be impression. Are you getting me? Elevation, illumination, enlightenment, empowerment. Enlightenment, empowerment, elevation. I like those three E's right there. Father, I release it in the spirit upon my friend right now. And, and, and let the gift of faith talk about. Paul talked about it there. The Holy Spirit had him talk about it. In 1 Corinthians 12, the gift of faith. 
to begin to declare and believe and receive what you're praying for answered. And don't be afraid of the anointing. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Whoo! Just dive into it. And, and, you know, sometimes you get in the presence of God and you've been so jacked up, so messed up, so suppressed for so long and kind of in other things that you don't think it can last. But God wants it to last. He wants you to stay there all the time as much as you can. This morning I woke up early and sometimes you, you, my schedule is so heavy I can feel a little tired. Not this morning. I was, I was ready to go to the house of God in the morning. I had to pack. I had to finish things. I'm traveling uh, later on today. I'm in another service in a, in, a few, in a few moments heading over there and then I'm going right to the airport. You know, but, but I just walked straight up. And, and the minute my feet hit the floor off the side of the bed, I started praying. And I felt, wow, this is great. Now, now you, may, you may be a fronter, you know what I mean? You think you, you act to everybody like you're like that every day. Come on. Even God's greatest servants sometimes have a struggle with living this every day, seven days a week. I'm, I know what I'm talking about. You Preachers preach by a gift. When you see them in the pulpit, you see the best part of them. The anointing comes alive in them. It doesn't mean that they don't have anything else going on in their life that's hard. Let's be real about it. You see your pastor, your prophet, me, you think, oh, every day, 24-7, 365, they're just on top of the ocean. Here's the ocean. Floating around, flying on the cloud. Let me show you some clouds. Look at the clouds up there. Look at that. Here's the sun. So beautiful. Just up there. You know, up there. You see that? <laughs> you think that it's always... No, you know, it, it can be. But there are times... I feel the anointing. My God. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm on fire here. There's some, there's some weeds on the thing. I wonder, there's so much fire on me. I wonder if these are going to catch fire. Look at this stuff here. You see that seaweed there? It might be a little wet, but I feel so much fire, even this can get lit up. Woo! Hallelujah. So, so here's what I'm trying to tell you. You need to make a note who you're, who you're with when it happens, how it happens, the environment, the place, the time, and you need to push yourself to be doing it as much as possible. If, you, if you're a person and you have a friend who's really on... Uh, in the flow, in the spirit, and every time you meet them, they like enliven, make your day. The presence of God comes, it makes you want to go in the spirit and pray. That's a good connection. That's a good relationship. Then you meet someone else, and then they're all sad, and then you start feeling like, uh, next thing you know, you were, you were on fire an hour ago or earlier in the day, but after being with them, my God, you feel like you want to just run away. Well, run away permanently, and don't be, don't be connected with people like that. Wet blankets. Someone said there's a great man of wisdom said there's the nature of a king and the nature of a fool in every man. Whatever button you push is what'll come out. You know? To you men, the Bible talks about a whorish woman, you know, will mess a man up. Talked about the sensuous woman, not sensual in a good way, but in a wrong way. And you don't need to be in connection with that. Because it might seem nice for a minute, but then you're gonna you're gonna suffer by what you do in that situation. So don't do it. Simple, right? But so you want to stay in the atmosphere of the glory. You want to stay where God is moving. And you, some of you single people, you know, you need to get married soon, and then you could rock the house and not be sinful doing it. Because the marriage bed is undefiled, right? I marvel at men. They look like they have a good relationship with their wife. They're powerful in the spirit. They're getting all their needs met. There's food to eat. There's love to be made, so to speak. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not me saying too much. There, you can travel together. You can do things. You, can, you got that base covered, you know? You want to do that. But you want to be equally yoked with someone that also is in the fire of God, too. I believe in that. 
My God, can you imagine me, the prophet of God, being with some dull, boring woman? Jesus in heaven, I might as well stay single. You, you got, you know, you got to have, you got to be plugged into the fire. I want a woman who speaks in tongues while she's cooking, man. I want to say, I want to hear some worship going on when I'm trying to sleep. I wouldn't mind that. I tell you, go to the other room and pray. I'm trying to sleep. No, I wake up and say, let's, let's sing us. Let's worship together in Jesus' name, you know. Because you know what that does? It keeps the presence of God alive in you. You notice it also comes through here. It also comes through speaking. So this is the gateway. What you hear, what you see, and what you speak. What you speak, what you see, and what you hear. What you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're speaking. That guides a man's life, a woman's life. So I got to go, but... Well, I don't have to. I can keep going, but I just feel I wanted to share that. I'll do a part two to this. I mean, not from this scene. I'll come at you from another place, another city. But this is so beautiful, isn't it? Wow. I love it. Father, thank you for making this moment. And I'll be back here. It's not like, uh, don't cry for me, Argentina. I'm coming back. I met, apostle from, I met an apostle from Argentina. He wants me to come to Buenos Aires. I'm going to come. Jesus name the Latin world is opening to us wow the African world is already open Europe's open the Latin countries opening to us phenomenal I'm so excited so I love you I, I trust you'll share this with everybody and sow this seed into their life of the word that they can also be activated by this father I pray this activation of the gifts of the spirit to come alive in my friend and precious partner of the ministry. If you're not a partner yet, become a partner. Forgive us if we haven't had everything so available online. It takes a lot of work, but I'm going to be making my own television channel, my own portal, my own network, my own product uh, thing that people can tap and get all these messages. We're working on it. We're working on it. And I'm writing about 10 new books right now simultaneously. They'll be coming out of the shoots, out of the oven. <laughs> Hot, fresh bread from heaven. They'll be coming out one by one by one by one. So I look forward to uh, sharing those with you. And But please, please do connect with us. We help so many people around the world in so many different ways. You can partner with me on thomasmanton.com. You can use Cash App, dollar sign, Dr. Thomas Manton. Let some of my friends... Put these, uh, my numbers on the screen, my WhatsApp. You can write me a WhatsApp message and I will, uh, I will get back to you, all right? And I will get the message. Don't think I won't. Send your name. Uh, you can call it. Better to just send a text, send a WhatsApp text to plus 254-792-320-780. Let that be on the screen and uh, I'll get back to you, okay? You can also pry... Quickly private message me here on Facebook and put your telephone number in there and your email if you remember to do that. But put your telephone number in there is the reason I'm saying that. If you want to communicate, I will pray with you. I'll see if I can call you back. And also your email address, please, that will help us. Please do that. And I look forward to talking with you again on the next broadcast in a part two, maybe a part three to this. I got, I'll get the title for it once I've switched this off. So, But we're talking about speaking in faith and speaking and declaring and envisioning and imagining and with faith and power and receiving the anointing of the Holy Ghost to prophesy and to declare things to happen. And you as God beloved, as God's own beloved, can also flow in the gifts of the Spirit. So I'm the institutor of that because I'm in the office of the prophet. So you can maybe be doing what I'm doing, but I can help you where you can also flow in these kind of things. You understand? So be activated now in Jesus' name, and I will talk to you later on the next broadcast. Love you. Live from the ocean side. Love you so much. Talk to you again real soon in Jesus' name. And you pray for me. And peep, you know, the, I'm reminded, the Lord spoke to me that God is talking to someone to give me property Huge sums of off, you know, things that are like a percentage of a business deal or inheritance or something 
vehicles, land, property. I don't know. God is talking to somebody. I, I heard that a few weeks back, and I've just been saying it. I don't know who that is. It, it could even be someone I've never met or even talked to, but the Lord is speaking to you and telling you, Thomas Manton IV is to be the recipient of that, my servant, and you obey God and watch what he'll do for you. Greater blessing. You know, the anointing of financial increases about my life. And people that connect, they get blessed in mega ways. So I look to hear from you and we'll talk to you again real soon. Start speaking, start praying, start declaring, and let God begin to develop even the flow of the gifts of the Spirit in you. I believe for him to do it in Jesus' name and it's going to work. Watch. In 